we started working with this PR team, who again, are some of the best in the business, and after trying for months, we wound up empty-handed. Why? Well, the PR company summarized it to us in one phrase. No one wants positive news stories about YouTubers. So, what I like the most about uh, Matt Pat's video titled, What They Won't Tell You About Your Favorite Channels, is that Matt, Ta Matt Pat, <coughs> motherfucker, Matt Pat takes aim at traditional media and criticizes basically their double standards and the hypocrisy that they've been showing and they've been doing when pushing for family friendly content on YouTube. Because all these motherfucking advertisers sit here and they bitch and bitch at YouTube for not being advertiser friendly and having one or two instances of some random ass, uh, I don't know, bad actors or moments that uh, big YouTubers had a moment of weakness or a slip up and they like to take that and they like to make a big fucking deal out of it when it's really not and they get people riled up and they whip up the crowd and they're like, look, see here, YouTube is a pretty shit place. It's got shit people that make suicide horse videos, you know, it's got child exploitation, it's got all that bullshit. And so advertisers then pull out, and it's, I don't, ah, fuck, I lost my train of thought. But you get what I'm trying to say, right? And then they go over, and they come, and with traditional media, like uh, Matt Pat was talking about, you got your Kim Kardashians, you got your um, football, you got your all this other shit, that there's horrible fucking, definitely not advertiser friendly, like, uh, content that kind of surrounds it. Kim Kardashian, love her. Totally think her family's brilliant. Legitimately, I seriously think that they're brilliant. Brands are tripping over themselves to work with her, and the press are eager to cover her everywhere. But if we're all so worried about brand safety and the bad behavior of YouTubers, then shouldn't we also be avoiding Kim Kardashian and her family? Since all of their success was built on a sex tape that Kim explicitly had to sign off of, in order to have leaked out to the public. Look it up, friends. She actually had to sign it in order for that to go public. Or, you know, you can also mention her unwillingness to disclose brand deals on Instagram, which she was accused of, and then she was warned about by the FTC, and yet she still does it. Hmm. And people that work in this industry, in that industry, in the traditional media industry, that are right douchebags, or are accused of being right douchebags, but you know, the media never talks about them. And that's kind of what I love about this video is that Matt Pat's showing, you know, hey media, you bitch at YouTube for this bullshit, but then you turn right back around and treat like all this other controversial shit like it's not a big deal at all. And you know, a lot of the things that Matt Pat brought up, like he wasn't bringing up necessarily to um, like cause a ruckus or to shit on that particular person. Like he brought up Childish Gambino's uh, music video, which was talking about some of the uh, violence and specifically gun violence and racism in America. And it's a great video. And Matt Pat acknowledges that it's a great video. But what he's Matt Pat's not saying that Childish Gambino's video should be taken down. He's just saying that based on what advertisers expect other people on YouTube to act like, um, yeah, what other people on YouTube, um, what they, what the family friendly standards are for everyone else on YouTube suddenly doesn't apply to, uh, Childish Gambino's video, despite having these, um, uh, what you could consider not family friendly themes. And it's definitely a double standard. Yeah, and it kind of begs this question, like, why are the media going after YouTubers so hard, but they won't go after kind of these other events happening than in the news quite so hard, and they won't report on that? And why won't the media report on the good things that are happening on YouTube, like all the charity work? And yeah, this is a big, big, big topic that Matt Pat brings up in his video, and he hammers home on it. It's it's basically the thesis, and he says that YouTubers should be recognized in 
uh, mainstream media and traditional media for their good, honest, charitable work and for the things that they do that are good. Because there's a lot of, because uh, there's plenty of stories that could be made. And Matt Pat lists off like numerous YouTubers from all walks of life, from, you know, all different types of channels that have done this amazing charity work. And uh, he cites specifically the gaming YouTubers, which are often criticized the hardest, especially by traditional media. And he points out that they are some of the most generous of um, the the charity workers within uh, YouTube. And they're even, when compared to like other celebrities uh, outside of the uh, internet sphere, they donate collectively just as much as some of these like big name celebrities like uh, Oprah and Bill Gates and all those. So yeah, it kind of just shows that there's this kind of double standard again with the media who are willing to, you know, uh, throw Bill Gates up on a pedestal for donating whatever sus and such money, which is wonderful in and of itself. But then they turn a blind eye whenever, you know, Markiplier raises $500,000 in less, well, in about 24 hours, or when Jacksepticeye does one of his monthly live streams when they raise money. Yeah, and MatPat also hits on the point that YouTube is a place for people that don't necessarily um, fit in with the rest of society. Uh, well, yeah, and that's basically what it is. Uh, take, for example, a show like Critical Role, done by Matthew Mercer and a bunch of other voice actors who work as voice actors for a bunch of like video games and uh, sometimes movies and all that. But, you know, the Critical Role show itself is based primarily on Twitch and YouTube. And they do charity, and they do, uh, they've do they done a bunch of good things over the uh, the runtime of the critical role and the various D&D campaigns. So, you know, you got these people that might not have a platform to do what they do somewhere else and be so positive and such a positive influence towards people somewhere else. And you have traditional media coming in and uh, pretty much slamming these people and uh, causing these adpocalypses to happen and pushing YouTube. And I don't necessarily understand why it's... It definitely has to do because YouTube and traditional media are in direct competition, but what they're doing effectively when they do this, like whenever YouTube is slammed with uh, this uh, bad press, they give this knee-jerk reaction and they just automatically assume, like, a good example of this is the uh, Slingshot channel run by Jorg, I think his name is. Um, I was subscribed uh, for a long time. And uh, basically, there's a tabloid fucking news source, like The Sun or something like that, in Britain that talked about, uh, pretty much shat on Jorg in a very derogatory and... Uh, unfair I would say way and uh, it was pretty nasty and it was pretty much untrue and YouTube's knee-jerk reaction to this fucking bullshit tabloid article was to pretty much like ban uh, and like strike Jorg's channel and eventually Jorg managed to get himself like reinstated and everything but if that isn't like like YouTube is like so sensitive to listening to the media and whatever they have to say and they just jump the gun and attack like their own community and like throw down regulations that hurt their own community without giving anyone um basically just without giving the YouTubers a chance to defend themselves. Like YouTube doesn't bother to investigate. It's like, oh, so Jorg, uh the sling from the Slingshot channel, uh this news article says that he's um doing something that like with weapons or whatever because I mean that's what he fucking does but it's like for educational purposes and it's he builds like his own slingshots and stuff but oh this uh, I see this tabloid news source uh, says he's dangerous well as a as a, a YouTube I should uh, uh, pretty much take down his channel and I don't really like <sighs> you don't give the YouTubers a chance to defend themselves
So I know I've gone off track here, but basically what MatPat's doing is he's defending YouTube and smaller YouTubers and just smaller creators, uh, like smaller video creators in general. And I think that's pretty admirable because uh, every adpocalypse, you see channels that just wither and die because the creators can't support themselves full time, you know, creating their videos, creating, like doing what they love. I think there was like a uh, a Rust channel that was just reaching its prime called Ramsey, and uh, I remember discovering this channel just a little while ago, and due to the adpocalypse that was caused by the Wall Street Journal backlash with PewDiePie, uh, Ramsey, I think, had to stop making videos because he wasn't sure uh, if YouTube would, like, uh, support him. And if this wasn't Ramsey, then I think it was his friend, like, that this applies to, whoever Ramsey played with on Rust. And, you know, you just see stuff like that. And these are big channels. These are channels that have, like, 1 million subscribers. And they can't make the monetization to support themselves. It's just fucking ridiculous. And it's heartbreaking to see. And so when you get a big creator like Matt Pat, who emits this now new... Uh, fucking another adpocalypse caused by some jerk off um, attacking YouTube brands. Uh, you got Matt Pat that's standing up and saying, no, you know, this is enough, enough's enough. You're punishing the entire platform for the grievances of like one or two people or a very small select few group of people. Like, obviously, there needs to be change in place, but the best kind of change, I think, and the change that's least going to hurt people is change that's a little bit more slower, a little bit more thought through, and a little bit more methodical. And unfortunately, YouTube doesn't seem to have the ability to be any of those things. They're just like, okay, uh, we have a problem. Okay, uh, so we're going to solve it, and we don't care how many people we have to... Uh, bowl down in order to solve this problem, but we want to solve it right now so we can get advertisers back. And it's such a such a shitty kind of fucking scandal. And honestly, this doesn't help. I don't see like in the long run. I think Matt Pat talked about this how this helps advertisers in the long run because essentially they're making the content they want to advertise on boring because they've they're causing YouTube to censor it to the point where it's just this bland kind of regurgitation of like similar shit and I don't see how that could possibly be sustainable in the long run especially since like what made YouTube so popular and so powerful today is because uh, you know like we said earlier you got people that don't necessarily fit in people from people like Critical Role who don't really have any other place where they could you know, do what they do. Yeah, and uh, like I said at the start of this video, it's nice to see uh, Matt Pat pointing out specific examples like Kim Kardashian not uh, telling that her uh, pictures or her videos on Instagram are sponsored and you, she keeps getting like brands and all that bullshit. It's because she's so wealthy that basically this bullshit is overlooked, but it's stuff like that like that the media ignores on the the traditional brand side that's such bullshit and such uh, crap to see so yeah so I'll just wrap this video up I've rambled long enough for you guys to figure out you know maybe what the fuck I'm talking about so basically here's the takeaway YouTube and specifically youtubers and even more specifically than that YouTube gamers as Matt Pat has pointed out, are not fucking shitty and not fucking assholes and definitely good people. <laughs> definitely some of the most charitable people, not only on YouTube, but just in general. Just like as far as like celebrities go, internet or otherwise, YouTubers are very giving and I think they are a positive force overall in the world and uh, that's a pretty grand statement but I think it's uh, I think it's objectively true 
just looking at the influence that, uh, you know, Critical Role, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, Markiplier, you know, Mr. Beast, uh, Ninja, all these big people doing all these like charity streams for everybody. I think it's pretty undeniable that they have a massive impact uh, on the world and in a good way. So uh, basically, traditional media, how about you fuck off with all this YouTube is the worst thing ever bullshit and YouTubers are the worst people ever because we're not, we're good people, we're just trying to make a living and make the world a little bit of a better place along the way as we do it. And yeah, there's some bad actors every once in a while, but I mean every industry has those kind of people, and if you take that small group and use it to label all of us as bad, I think you're making an, a vast overgeneralization. Basically, if you live in a house of glass, don't throw stones. That's all I have to say for this video. If you stuck around to the end, you're awesome. And uh, if you like this, maybe I'll make some more videos in the future along the same kind of lines. That being said, thank you for watching once again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.